What's going on guys, Luke here, and I just got done watching the Manly and Titans game, which finished 36-0 to the Manly Warringah Sea Eagles, an upset to say the least, going into the game at least anyways, an upset. Now look, the big talking point going into the game was the fact that Tom Trevojevic was back, back in the number one position for Manly, and how much of an influence he was going to be on the Manly side. I've legitimately not seen a team rely on one player more than Manly do. Like, it's crazy to sit here and say a team that has Cherry Evans in the halves, you've got Kieran Foran, you've got Jake Trevojevic, Marty Tapao, whole bunch of great players in the side, and yet Tom Trevojevic comes into the side and turns him from like a bottom four side competing for the wooden spoon into a side that you think could compete for the top four. It's actually, it's such a crazy difference, and we've seen it year in, year out. Literally every year this happens. Every year Tom Trevojevic goes into that Manly side, Manly start competing with the best sides. We saw them take on Roosters, I think it was a couple of years ago, to look really good, and then he goes in injured, and then all of a sudden Manly start looking like a bottom four side, and we go, oh shit, Manly are going to get the wooden spoon, and then he'll come back and he'll play a couple of games, and then they'll end up getting some form again, and then he'll go down injured. So honestly, that's the real problem. We all know Tom Trevojevic's ability. We know he's fantastic. He's in himself well as representative. He's an Australian representative. There's no doubt that Tom Trevojevic is a fantastic player. The problem is how big of an influence he has, and the fact that he doesn't play that often. Now, if this is a sign of things to come in terms of him playing, man, they could be anything this year. They really could be anything. They looked absolutely fantastic against the Titans. I will say the Titans weren't good. The Titans definitely weren't good, and I have big question marks over this Titan side. Uh, we've seen them just one week be outstanding, the next week not. I think they're flat track bullies. That's how it comes across to me, and they definitely weren't going to be bullying this Manly four-pack, and then also you add in Tom Trevojevic back into the side, and then Manly, all of a sudden, they look like a really, really good side. Now, I think a big problem for Manly is their hook position. Uh, we've seen a lot of these shitty teams. It all comes down to hook position, and also the fact that they don't have a genuine hooker. Now, Manly, they have two hookers in the side, none of which are actually a hooker. You've got Kay Castle off the bench and Lachlan Croker starting for them, and both of them are not legitimate hookers. They're halves who are playing hooker just out of necessity, but I think Tom Trevojevic being back in the side, you add in all the rest of the players, I think they've got a good enough spine if Tom Trevojevic is playing, I'm talking about as well. Because like, when they've got other guys playing there, look, we, we already established this. Manly are just absolute trash. But Tommy Turbo is good enough to just elevate those guys. Which means that, look, Manly probably won't be a top four side. I mean, I was talking about them competing with them. But I was more so meaning just when they actually play those sides. They'd be able to give them a contest. Uh, but just in terms of them actually being a top eight side, I think they can carry a Lachlan Croker in a hooker or a cake cast. Just because of how good the rest of the spine is. But just on the actual game that we just saw Tommy Turbo play... Look, I think it's evident that he hasn't lost any speed. Uh, his skills look as silky as ever. It's just it's just like the reminder. And not only this season, but just whenever there's a big injury for Tommy Trebojevic, I think we always look at him and we go, yeah, he's pretty good, but he's not really Tedesco level. Or he's not really he's not really that caliber of player. But then you see him play and you're like, oh my God, there's the reminder. He definitely is. He just can't stay in the park. And to be honest, in terms of all the hamstring injuries, I was assuming that he was going to come back and he was going to look slow and not mobile. And You know, the skills are always going to be there, but I just didn't, didn't think the speed would be there. And I didn't think the rest of the fitness would be there. But he, he just literally looked like he did not miss a beat. It was actually crazy to watch him come out and just hit the ground running. Because I literally thought it was going to take him weeks, maybe a month to get back into the swing of things. Instead, he just comes out and absolutely schools the Titans. AJ Brimson was sitting there and he couldn't do anything. Just the whole Titans side couldn't do anything. It was just an absolute masterclass from Tom Trebojevic. And then the rest of the Manly side was looking pretty good. I also think Josh Hughes has been a big inclusion to their side. Uh, so they've got a lot of good prospects in their side. The Manly team, however, like I said, it all comes down to Tom Trebojevic. I can sit here and say your Schuster's look good and Cherry Evans and Foran and um, all these other players, Jason Saab, they all look good and they all look like they have potential on that. But the second Tom Trebojevic doesn't play, they all look like shit. So I think it all comes down to Tom Trebojevic. And I think the more and more we see Tom Trebojevic and Manly, the more we can see how much they rely on him. And also the fact that I don't think we've ever seen a team rely on a player more than Manly and Tom Trebojevic. You look at the Roosters, they've got a good enough side that if you took James Tedesco out for a couple of games, I think they'll still be able to get a win. Uh, we've seen them take out Luke Keery. Uh, we've seen them lose numerous players throughout the season. Even like Melbourne, you take out Puppenhausen, they can add in Nico Hines. Um, look, there's a, a lot of other teams. I think if you took Latron Mitchell out of the Rabideau side for a game or two, I think they'd be able to get the job done. Alex Johnson was slotting there. But mainly, the second they lose Tom Trebojevic, they dead set look like a New South Wales Cup side, despite the rest of the players in the side. And it's not like the team's full of slouches. I've already listed them off. There's lots of internationals. There's lots of rep players in there. And yet, when Tom Trebojevic isn't there, they look like shit. They can't do anything. And it's actually crazy to see, especially for a mainly side coach for Des Hasler, the fact that they rely on one player. Because I feel like he's never been a coach who relies on one guy. Yes, in the past, Desi has worked a game plan around one player, in the sense like Ben Barber, 2012. The game plan was just all about Ben Barber. 
But at the same time, if he missed the game, you could have slotted someone else in there. And they probably still could have got the job done because they, they just had a solid squad. Whereas this Manly side, they have a solid squad, but they just don't have a solid team when Tom Trebojevic isn't there. It's one of the weirdest things I've seen in the NRL. And I think in the comment section below, I think you guys will agree with me. Manly are just a total different side with Tom Trebojevic in it, which just makes it even more scary because we know how good he is and we know the potential of Manly. But we also know that it's probably not going to happen for the whole season. And that's the most frustrating thing. I think as a footy fan and probably as a Manly fan, Manly fans are probably absolutely spewing about this. You see Tom Trebojevic come back and you see him absolutely kill it right from minute one and you go, I wish he could be there for all 26 rounds, but it just doesn't happen. And then he'll probably go and play Origin and he might get injured there, he might not, but he's still away. Even when he's back playing, he's not even playing for Manly, he's playing for New South Wales. Now one thing I just want to address before I end this video is the fact that earlier this year I did a video where I talked about Trebojevic and him getting injured again and the idea that they should move him to the centre position. Now I'm not necessarily against that, but when he goes and plays as good as what he just did at fullback and you see how Dom he is with the ball in hand. I just feel like you can't play him at centers. I don't know what you do. I feel like you would play him at center. You're more inclined to play him in the halves, to be honest with you. We just see how good his ball skills are. But look, I think it's safe to say Tom Trebojevic is a fullback through and through. He just needs his body to hold up because he could be the best fullback in the comp. There's been a lot of talk lately about Latrell Mitchell. James Tedesco is always going to get the plaudits. You've got your Caelan Pongers. You've got your Brimsons. You've got a lot of good fullbacks in the NRL at the moment. But Tom Trebojevic, he could be number one as long as he's fit. Not could be. I think he would be number one if he was fit. Uh, last year, I did a video and I was talking about my predictions for the 2020 NRL season. And I, I was saying I thought Tom Trebojevic was the chance for the Dally M. Would have been the same this year. It's just he can't stay on the field. But this literally proves the point that Tom Trebojevic has the potential to be the best player in the NRL. It's just his body doesn't hold up. But hey, maybe this is a turning point. Maybe it took him getting injured in the shower or toilet or whatever the hell he was doing, running on the streets. Maybe it takes an embarrassing thing like that for him to maybe take it seriously um, instead of rushing him back. And maybe his rehabs haven't been that great in the past. I don't really know. But look, we definitely saw an improved Manly yesterday. And if that's the side of things to come for Manly, I think they're definitely a top eight side, at least with Tom Trebojevic in the side. But leave in the comment section below what were your thoughts of the Manly Titans game and do you think Tom Trojevic has the potential to be the number one fullback in the game if he is fit? And it all comes down to him being fit. But yeah, I'd just love to hear your opinions on Tom Trebojevic. Anyways, that's how I'm going to end this video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also turn on the notification bell. It's super important in terms of if you're actually seeing the video because you all know the sub boxes are quite dodgy. So go ahead, turn on the notification bell. Uh, don't rely on the sub boxes. Also, while you're at it, go ahead and give me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT for the most part. Mr. Luke just for Facebook, but everything else is Mr. Luke and YT, as you can see on the screen right now, including Snapchat. So go ahead and give me an ad, give me a like, give me a follow. And yeah, that's how I'm going to end this video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more content on the channel. I'll see you next time. See you.